Okay, hi everyone. So today I'm actually filming this lesson from outside of my daughter's dance, little dance class. So I told you if I can do this, anyone can do it. I'm going to try and keep from wiggling my phone too much. So let's get started. Oh wait, I gotta explain the hat. So I got this from an online, um, it was a conference of online business entrepreneurs. And I'm actually going to tell you what I use it for, but I threw it on to come here so that I would have it when I tell you what I use it for and wore it into the studio. And I kind of made me feel cool. Like I was wondering if people wondered like, what does she do for a living? So I was like, yeah, pretty cool, right? <laughs> no, not so much. Anyway, so let me move this down so that I'm not so shaky and wiggly. So this lesson is going to be about organizing your time with your cute little kids so that you have more time to spend on your business and that there's not a bunch of overlap while the kids are like hanging on you and crying on you and they want lunch while you still have half of something to type or record. And so I try to make this super simple. So first of all, first a disclosure, I'm only giving you opinions of what worked for my family. Make sure you never leave a child unattended blah, 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 always be there for your children, right? Okay, perfect. So good moms don't leave their kids and like go work on their blog out in the car while their kids are inside and could choke on something. So I have to go through this. I'm sure many of you already know this. Um, but the very first and most important thing when you're trying to organize your time so that you can have a little more time to work on your business is preparation, okay? So the first thing I like to do is, or I like to suggest to women, is get a box of toys, Play-Doh, Legos, whatever your kids love and do, um, special ones that they only get to pull out when you're working on your website, on your computer, because this makes them excited for you to go do it, and they actually will um, leave you alone longer so that they can have more time with these special toys that they only get to play with then, okay? Um, this is my creator hat. Children need boundaries. They need to know when it's okay to come to mommy and when it's not. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But what I do, I have a little bell. I brought it with that my super loud that I put my hat on. And while my hat is on, my kids can't bother me. And well, I mean, they can't come to me unless it's an emergency or something. And I say, hey, I'm going into a block for one hour, and as long as I have this hat on, you need to solve your own problems, okay? Remember? And they all know that ringing the bell puts me into a block, and they go do their thing, and when I'm done, I ring the bell again, and I come out of a block, okay? And so we call it a block. But before I do that, I do feed and water them, otherwise they're going to get hungry or thirsty while I'm working on the computer. And before I do that, I feed and water myself. You don't want to like, oh, you know, doing my checklist, doing the laundry, cleaning up because the baby sleeps at two o'clock and I want all this done by two so that I can go into a block at two and let the older kids play in their box. And then you do that and you get there and you're like, I didn't eat lunch. I didn't drink. Take care of yourself. Hydrate. Give yourself a little snack. Get all of those chores done and give yourself just 20 minutes of white space to just sit around and like play with your kids before you go into a block for an hour. It just refreshes you and makes you more creative and more open to coming up with cool ideas. So feed and water them, feed and water yourself, okay? Also, before you do this, and you can do this the night before, you can do it while you're folding laundry, think up exactly what is the most important thing to do on your business? And we're going to go into some of these steps. But first, let's get these, these kids under control, right? So the most important thing that you want to spend during this precious one hour of silence that you're going to have to work on your business, okay? So plan ahead what you're going to work on. Feed them, water them. Feed them, water yourself. And be fresh and ready to start as soon as you have them ring that bell and you put your hat on, okay? Now, one thing I do want to say is that prefrontal cortex of your brain does not develop until later in life, and that's the part of your brain that makes you be a self-starter. So one thing you want to do is help your child get started in whatever it is, whether it's playing with Play-Doh or playing blocks, help them get them out, help them get them set up, 
before you say, okay, I'm going into a block, now you can come ring the bell because they aren't great at self-starters. If you just say, okay, I went into a block, go, go grab your things now and get started. They're going to be like, I don't know where they are. They're too high. I, I can't get the box. I can't get the lid off. So you want to help them get started and get that little toy thing going before you ever ring the bell. Okay. Now, the other thing I mentioned is kids need boundaries. This is so important. I had a lot of guilt when I was first working on my website. Like if they came and I had to say, oh, just a minute, I need 20 more minutes on this. I'm in the middle of something. And they're like, but I'm hungry, but I'm thirsty. And I'd like have all this guilt, like you bad mom, get over there and feed them. Oh, I really got to do this before I lose my train of thought though. Or, or, you know, if they pinch their finger while I'm working on my business, I'm like, what kind of mother are you? Okay let go of this guilt. It is better for your children. It helps them grow up to be independent. It teaches them to self-soothe, self-soothe, and they actually can become more creative by solving some of their own problem. Problems they've proven, if you are bored, the more creative side of your brain actually kicks on and they can exercise that creative part of their brain that eventually becomes the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial part of their brain, creative part of their brain in the future. So you do want to nurture them by giving them some boundaries saying, mommy's not here for you right now. Now, of course, this does not work with younger kids. Obviously, if you have like a breastfeeding infant, get them on a schedule. Hopefully you can get them on a schedule so that they can be asleep for an hour get them on a good sleep eat schedule and plan your time around that. Or if you have like a crawler that you have to have your eyes on the whole time because they might pick something up and put them in their mouth. I've been there. I worked in the kitchen because I could see down into the family room and into the front room and I put a gate across the stairs so I could have eyes on them at all time type eyes on them at all times or I would do it during their nap time. I know that this doesn't always work but I would try and schedule their nap time at the same time that I gave the older kids the special box of toys to do so that we can get everyone under control all at once and I can have like a quiet hour to be creative and spend on my passion, right? So I recommend you do that. And uh, one more thing, if you have the kind of kid that plays with the Legos for 10 minutes, chooses another thing out of the box, plays with that for 10, you're 30 minutes into this, and then he's coming to you going, I'm bored, okay. Board, like I just mentioned, boredom's okay. It also helps them be creative to solve their own boredom. Go find some sticks and play with them or some, make them into a fort or something. It actually is really good for them. But another thing you can do is use incentives. So you can say, if you can keep yourself happy and busy the whole time I work until I ring the bell that I'm finished, then you get whatever, a little treat, a little sticker, whatever it is that they love and want. A new container of Play-Doh that they get to play with whenever. So be sure to use incentives. One thing we do is we save screen time for the time I want to work on my computer. We don't let our kids have unlimited screen time. It's terrible for them. I have websites about learning disabilities and they're actually contributing to them. Kids playing on these too early in life and too many hours on them. And so we really limit the kids screen time. And so one thing I for sure do is save that screen time for that hour that I need some quiet if it's uh, like a kid that doesn't want to play with the toys or we've had them long enough, I need to replace them into something new that makes it exciting again, then I will do that. Or I'll do the box of toys for one hour, go play with them for a half hour and do the screen time for an hour. So it really helps to have things that they're doing and can do. Um, let's see, fights. Okay, on my list is fights because these kids are playing in this box. I wanted to play this, no I did, now they're screaming. Mom needs to come in and handle this. She pulls herself out of a block, gets it under control, goes back, and then you're like, where was I? What was my next thought that I wanted to express? Oh, I don't remember. So the best thing to do is when mommy is working in her block, each child has a designated spot in the house and they are not together. They get their toys from the box that they're going to be playing with during that time, or maybe a couple different ones so they can switch them off while they're sitting there. But one child is down in the family room, the other is in the front room. However you see fit to make that work so that they aren't interacting with each other and fighting with each other, right? Because fights are one of the things that have pulled me out of my block more than anything else, okay? Um, 
Okay, we talked about the infants, obviously. Try and get them on a good nap schedule so that at the same time your kids go, your baby is napping too. The next subject is near and dear to me because I already talked on this a tiny bit. Guilt. Okay, right? Moms have so much guilt. Like I said, if they hurt themselves, if they're hungry, whatever, if you're not seeing to their needs immediately, you immediately feel guilty. And like when I first started, because I believe the Bible and Christian based, I'm like, this is so bad. Like I am neglecting my child and chasing money or um, get trying for financial gain. It's so bad of me. Guess what? No, it isn't. I was there a lot and it's okay if they have to solve their own problems for an hour. So like I already said at the beginning of this, let go of that guilt. Just let it go. Also let go of the guilt that you're trying to make some money because believe me, it takes two incomes nowadays. And I believe it did clear back from the time of Adam and Eve. One of the translations of the Bible actually says that Adam worked the fields and Eve worked with him or alongside him. A big revolution came through and, you know, with corporate America, well, first the industrial revolution, men would go off to work instead of working, you know, instead of hoeing the carrots with their wife and their kids playing around their feet. Yeah, I'm sure the women had to be in the house more, you know, breastfeeding, raising their kids. But I think moms and dads worked together to raise their families more back then. And now people go out to the workplace. It separates the families a little bit more. The kids go off to school. It's just our environment. So does mommy sometimes have to work and still be a good a good mommy and a good wife? Yeah. Yeah. And even if you're doing it to as a passion project, like something you want to share with the world, who better to share awesome information with other women out there that need help on things than a woman? So I don't think God created us just to feed kids and change diapers and tidy up and do that all day long. He gave us brains, he gave us creative brains, even entrepreneurial brains from the time I was a kid. I remember saving like the little fry box because I was gonna start my own fry store. So like, this is totally normal and it's totally okay. It's what you love the most. Make sure you love your family the most. Don't go binge on it for 12 hours straight and leave your kids in dirty diapers. Like, get them taken care of and make sure they're taken care of. And then they get a little bit of independence time while you do your thing. Okay? So, let go of that guilt. And let's see here. Oh, one thing I do want to say. When I say let go of the guilt, I still believe that little children should not see their mom constantly looking at a screen. Right? So, my kids had to way, way more than I like because I also had a job while I was building my website and my job was at home and primarily on a computer. Um, but when you're sitting with your kids, turn your phone off. Don't sit there and goof off on Instagram or Facebook. Do that after the kids go to bed. It can be your spoil time. Or maybe in the middle of the day, give yourself a 20 minute break, you know, out on the porch or whatever, sipping some cold drink and playing on your Insta. But if you're gonna have your face in front of a screen part of the time, there needs to be a lot of the day that they see mommy looking them in the eyes. Okay, it's only fair to these kids. They're growing up in a generation when mommy never looks up from the phone. And so, yeah, let go of the guilt, but time everything. Okay, so we're going to sum this up. This is a short lesson. We're only at 13 minutes. But the most important thing is time management. Set up those one to two hour uh, windows according to how old your children are and how much they can take. And then do 30 minutes of your phone in the other room while you're playing with them, while you're feeding them, looking them in the eye is actually stimulating to their brain. And God made us to look into our kids' eyes and actually talk to them. And it helps them become more intelligent. And so do that. And uh, so the last three things, I'm just going to recap. Don't feel guilty. But the three things that are the most important is planning ahead. So you have some toys, you, ha you know what you're going to be doing. Um, management of time and management of the household so that everything's under control when you go to do that. And uh, like I said, preparation. Okay, so that's it. So work on those things and get ready because when we start talking about the steps to build your business coming soon, then you're going to want to be able to have some time for yourself to work on this business because you'll get excited and passionate about it.
and you're going to want that time. You'll actually look forward to that time and you'll get so excited about everything that you uh, create or produce during that time. Okay, so good luck and I will see you back in the next time on the next lesson. Thank you.